Operation Ichigo, Yihao Zuo Zan Ichigo Sakasen, lit. Operation No. 1, was a campaign of a series of major battles between the Imperial Japanese Army forces and the National Revolutionary Army of the Republic of China, fought from April to December 1944. It consisted of three separate battles in the Chinese provinces of Henan, Hunan and Guangxi. These battles were the Japanese Operation Kogo or Battle of Central Henan, Operation Togo 1 or the Battle of Changhang, and Operation Togo 2 and Togo 3, or the Battle of Guilin Luzhou, respectively. The two primary goals of Ichi Go were to open a land route to French Indochina, and capture air bases in southeast China from which American bombers were attacking the Japanese homeland and shipping. In Japanese, the operation was also called Tairiku Datsu Sakasen, Da Lu Da Tong Zuo Zan or Continent Cross Through Operation, while the Chinese refer to it as the Battle of Henan Hunan Guangxi, simplified Chinese, Yushang Gui Wei Zan, traditional Chinese, Yushang Gui Wei Zan, Pinyin, Yushang Gui Wei Zan. Campaign There were two phases to the operation. In the first phase, the Japanese secured the Pingan Railway between Beijing and Wuhan, in the second, they displaced the U.S. Air Forces stationed in Hunan Province and reached the city of Luzhou, near the border with Japanese-held Indochina. Seventeen divisions, including 500,000 men, 15,000 vehicles, 6,000 artillery pieces, 800 tanks and 100,000 horses participated in this operation. The Japanese included Kwantung Army units and equipment from Manchukuo, mechanized units, units from the North China Theater and units from mainland Japan to participate in this campaign. It was the largest land campaign organized by the Japanese during the entire Second Sino-Japanese War. Many of the newest American-trained Chinese units and supplies were forcibly locked in the Burmese Theater under Joseph Stilwell set by terms of the Lend-Lease Agreement. In Operation Kogo, 390,000 Chinese soldiers, led by General Tang Enbo, Tang Enbo were deployed to defend the strategic position of Luoyang. The 3rd Tank Division of the IJA crossed the Yellow River around Zhengzhou in late April and defeated Chinese forces near Xuchang, then swung around clockwise and besieged Luoyang. Luoyang was defended by three Chinese divisions. The 3rd Tank Division began to attack Luoyang on May 13 and took it on May 25. The second phase of Ichigo began in May, following the success of the first phase. Japanese forces advanced southward and occupied Changsha, Hengyang, Guilin and Luzhou. In December 1944, Japanese forces reached French Indochina and achieved the purpose of the operation. Nevertheless, there were few practical gains from this offensive. U.S. air forces moved inland from the threatened bases near the coast. The operation also forced British commandos working with the Chinese as part of Mission 204 to leave China and return to Burma. The U.S. 14th Air Force often disrupted the Hunan Guangxi Railway between Hengyang and Luzhou that had been established in Operation Ichigo. Japan continued to attack airfields where U.S. Air Forces were stationed up to the spring of 1945. The XX Bomber Command operating strategic B-29 bombers of the 20th Air Force, which were attacking Japan in Operation Matterhorn, were forced to move as well, but although this affected their efficiency for a short time, in early 1945 the 20th Air Force moved to newly established bases in the Marianas under the command of the newly established 21 Bomber Command. This nullified the limited protection that the Japanese home islands had received from Operation Ichigo. Topic. Henan peasants attack Kuomintang forces General Zhang Dingwen of the First War Zone gave his account of the behavior of Henan civilians. During the campaign, the unexpected phenomenon was that the people of the mountains in western Henan attacked our troops, taking guns, bullets, and explosives, and even high-powered mortars and radio equipment. They surrounded our troops and killed our officers. We heard this pretty often. The heads of the villages and Baojia village mutual responsibility groups just ran away. At the same time, they took away our stored grain, leaving their houses and fields empty, which meant that our officers and soldiers had no food for many days. This was revenge for the 1938 Yellow River flood and the Chinese famine of 1942-43. The famine killed some 4 million people in Henan. General Yang's account also said, 
Actually this is truly painful for me to say, in the end the damages we suffered from the attack by the people were more serious than the losses from battles with the enemy." The Henan peasants picked up the weapons Kuomintang troops had abandoned to defend themselves against the Japanese. When the Kuomintang army ordered the Henan locals to destroy the local highways to prevent the Japanese advance, they refused. In fact they sometimes even went back at night and mended roads which the army had torn up by day. Aftermath With the rapid deterioration of the Chinese front after Japanese launched Operation Ichigo in 1944, General Joseph Stilwell saw this as an opportunity to win his political struggle against Chiang Kai-shek, China's leader, and gain full command of all Chinese armed forces. He was able to convince General George Marshall to have President Franklin D. Roosevelt send an ultimatum to Chiang threatening to end all American aid unless Chiang at once," placed Stilwell, "...in unrestricted command of all your forces." An exultant Stilwell immediately delivered this letter to Chang despite pleas from Patrick Hurley, Roosevelt's special envoy in China, to delay delivering the message and work on a deal that would achieve Stilwell's aim in a manner more acceptable to Chang. Seeing this act as a move toward the complete subjugation of China, a defiant Chang gave a formal reply in which he said that Stilwell must be replaced immediately and he would welcome any other qualified U.S. general to fill Stilwell's position. As a result, Stilwell was replaced as Chief of Staff to Chiang Kai-shek and Commander of the U.S. Forces, China Theater USFCT, by Major General Albert Wedemeyer. His other command responsibilities in the China-Burma-India theater were divided up and allocated to other officers. Although Chang was successful in removing Stilwell, the public relations damage suffered by his Chinese Nationalist Party Kuomintang regime was irreparable. Right before Stilwell's departure, New York Times drama critic turned war correspondent Brooks Atkinson interviewed him in Chongqing and wrote, The decision to relieve General Stilwell represents the political triumph of a moribund, anti-democratic regime that is more concerned with maintaining its political supremacy than in driving the Japanese out of China. The Chinese communists have good armies that they are claiming to be fighting guerrilla warfare against the Japanese in North China. Actually they are covertly or even overtly building themselves up to fight Generalissimo's government forces. The Generalissimo Chiang Kai -shek naturally regards these armies as the chief threat to the country and his supremacy has seen no need to make sincere attempt to arrange at least a truce with them for the duration of the war. No diplomatic genius could have overcome the Generalissimo's basic unwillingness to risk his armies in battle with the Japanese. Atkinson, who had visited Mao Zedong in the communist capital of Yinan, saw his communist Chinese forces as a democratic movement after Atkinson visited Mao, his article on his visit was titled Yinan, a Chinese wonderland city, and the nationalists in turn as hopelessly reactionary and corrupt. This view was shared by many U.S. journalists in China at the time, but due to pro-Chang allied press censorship, it was not as well known to their readers until Stilwell's recall and the ensuing anti-Chang coverage forced it into the open. The Japanese successes in Operation Ichigo had a limited effect on the war. The U.S. could still bomb the Japanese homeland from Saipan and other Pacific bases. In the territories seized, Japanese forces controlled only the cities, not their surrounding countryside. The increased size of the occupied territory also thinned out the Japanese lines. A great majority of the Chinese forces were able to retreat out of the area, and later come back to attack Japanese positions. As a result, future Japanese attempts to fight into Sichuan, such as in the Battle of West Hunan, ended in failure. All in all, Japan was not any closer in defeating China after this operation, and the constant defeats the Japanese suffered in the Pacific meant that Japan never got the time and resources needed to achieve final victory over China. The Japanese suffered 11,742 kias by mid-November, and the number of soldiers that died of illness was more than twice this. The total death toll was about 100,000 by the end of 1944. Operation Ichigo created a great sense of social confusion in the areas of China that it affected. Chinese communist guerrillas were able to exploit this confusion to gain influence and control of greater areas of the countryside in the aftermath of Ichigo. Topic: In popular culture. The 1958 novel The Mountain Road, by Theodore White, a Time magazine correspondent in China at the time of the offensive. 
It was based on an interview with former OSS Major Frank Gleason who led a demolition group of American soldiers during the offensive that were charged with blowing up anything left behind in the retreat that might be of use to Japan. His group ultimately destroyed over 150 bridges and 50,000 tons of munitions, helping slow the Japanese advance. In 1960, it was adapted into a film starring James Stewart and Lisa Liu, noteworthy for being one of Stewart's only war films and the only one where he plays a soldier, as he was opposed to war films due to their inaccuracy. It is generally believed he made an exception for this film because it was anti-war. References Bibliography <references> 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 Mitter, Rana, China's War with Japan, 1937–1945, The Struggle for Survival, Penguin Books 2014, ISBN 978-0-141-03145-3 Further reading Sherry, Mark D. China Defensive. The U.S. Army Campaigns of World War II. United States Army Center of Military History. CMH Pub 72-38